In this video, we're going to look at how you can use our floor plans tool and set up your event room layouts. So we're going to uh, click into one of our events here, and then we're gonna scroll down in the tools list to the floor plans tool, and we're gonna click on that. And you can see I've already created two floor plans for this particular event. To go into a floor plan, just click on it. Here you can add a floor plan by clicking on the button. You can add, create one from scratch or in the import export area. If you've already created templates, you can import um, a template that you've already built as a new floor plan. I already have three templates I've created in the templates area right here. So if I go to templates and then click on floor plan templates, here are my three floor plan templates I already have in my account. Um, if I click on one, um, it's basically gonna look identical to the floor plan tool and you can build a floor plan from scratch right here if you want or um, uh, by clicking on the add template button right there um, or you can I'm going to go back to my event and into the floor plans tool inside of that event or if I've built a floor plan here inside of the event I can save it as a template um, so here are my two floor plans I've already built inside I can save one or both of those as a template so that I can reuse them again so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a floor plan from scratch. So here's where you type in the name of that floor plan. And then when it comes to the measurements, what you wanna do is you wanna put in where your room is at its widest and as at its longest. Um, so I'm gonna tell you why you do that here in a moment. So we're gonna save that. And once we save that, it pushes us into the floor plan dashboard. And what we see right here is the main floor plan palette where we can place items. At the top here, you can edit the name and dimensions, which we just added. You can also delete the floor plan and we'll go over the export tools here in a little bit. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to add a background image to this particular floor plan. Um, if you have say a JPEG or a PNG file from a venue that uh, uh, shows the outline of a room, you can add that particular image file as a background, which I've done right here. Um, and then you can scale it using this bar right here. So I'm gonna pull that, scale it up so that it fits and scales right to the width and length of the floor plan. That's why I made my floor plan the maximum width and length of my room so that this particular image fits in there. So now I can drag and drop items on top of this. So I'm gonna click on the rectangle uh, table right there. And um, what you would do with all the elements basically is you can add a name. Here for the table, I'm gonna add a chair type and a color to this item. You can, for the tables, you can add lengths and widths. Um, you can also add a service area or a buffer, buffer area around the table. And then for tables, you, you can also designate how many chairs you want at the top um, and on the sides. So I'm just gonna do four on the long sides and zero on the short for my rectangular table right there. Um, you can also add a variety of other tables over here in the left hand side, round, square, oval. You can add chair rows, trade show booths, furniture, We've got floors and stages and entertain, entertainment elements. Um, you can add architectural elements like walls, doors, stairs, and barriers. And again, you can adjust the sizes and names for all these things. You can add notes um, or uh, rulers, if you wish, to the, the floor plan so you can measure things out um, specifically. You can add food and beverage items, outdoor items like tents, um, audiovisual items like state uh, like uh, uh, screens, safety and fire, and finally transportation items. We're going to add an, a solid floor to our floor plan right here. And again, you can add the name right here. You can customize the name of pretty much any elements. Um, so if you don't see the element in our list here, you can just use like say the floor element as. Um, uh, you can, you can basically customize the name to make it be whatever you want. If you need to move the item, just click on it and drag it to where you want it. Um, we are going to add one more item. We're just gonna add a podium. Um, we have some items that are more placeholder type items and the podium item is one of those. You can, I'm gonna change the name and the color of it here and you can also customize the shape of it or the dimensions of it. And there's my lectern. I'm just gonna center it right there. So 
Other things that you can do with elements that you've placed, for example, if I click on it, it's gonna pull down an action items uh, list over here of things I can do with it. Say like, oh, duplicate this. Say um, I need several more of these. So I need four more of the identical table. I'm gonna click select four, duplicate now. It accordions them out so that I can drag and drop them and place them where I want. I'm gonna click on this now and you can also um, edit items. So I'm just going to quick edit that particular table. Um, so by clicking on items and selecting the element action uh, on the menu there, you can edit your elements that you've placed into your floor plan. Um, let's say I need to rotate this. I'm going to click on it, click on the rotate button. Again, I can use this toolbar or I can use the arrows left to right to adjust it. Um, I'm going to make this um, 45 degrees. So there we go. Um, when you're done, just click in the empty space. Um, you can also do uh, several other things, like I'm gonna click on one of my elements here. <clears throat> uh, you can delete it. So I'm just gonna click on the item and click on delete, and that removes it from my floor plan. And you can also move multiple items. So I'm gonna click on these three tables right here, click and hold on one and drag it, drag it, and it will move all three elements at once. Um, you can also place elements on top of each other or underneath each other. So um, I can put this table on top of my exhibit floor. And if I click on the element, um, I, it also in the actions menu, I can bring that element to the front or send it to the back. So if I send it to the back, it's going to appear below the floor, that floor that I created. And I can, if I drag it under it, it disappears. So let's pull this, put this floor and send that floor to back, which will pull my table on top of it again. So that's how you can layer elements inside of your floor plan. You can also drag and drop attendees onto seats in your floor plan. And you can do this whether you're managing attendees by RSVP or by selling tickets and registrations. Um, so you would click on the attendees tab. Um, if you are using an RSVP management, it's going to ask you for which RSVP event you want to use. Um, you would just select one there. And then um, what will show up is your list of attendees. And to put an attendee on a seat, just click, drag, and drop. Um, click, drag, and drop. Um, and you can see once you've added an attendee, and I'm gonna click on attendee view so I can view their names and meal choices. Once you've added an attendee over here on the left-hand side, it will show if it's added, it will show their, the table that being added to, and you can also remove the person from the seat if you wish right there. So now let's take a look at a built floor plan. So here is my floor plan completely built out with tables placed, um, with attendees placed on seats in, in many cases. Um, and you can drag and drop. If you wanna change an attendee on a seat, just click, drag and drop them onto another chair. Easy as that. Um, you, we're going to go to the top here and go through some of the view options. So right now we're in attendee view. Design view just shows you uh, the elements, the basic elements. The service view shows the service area or buffer space around your tables and uh, chair rows. And again, the attendee view is going to show your attendees. And if you have collecting via RSVPs, it's going to show meal choices too. You can lock the canvas. Um, so uh, if the canvas is unlocked, you can click on an empty part of the canvas and drag it anywhere you want to just for positioning. But uh, if you do not want the canvas to move, you just click on lock canvas and you can't move it anywhere. You can also lock the elements down. Right now they're not locked. So if I click on an element, I can move it. But now if I click on an element, it's not gonna go anywhere. So that's how you can lock down your floor plan. Um, right now I have the grid on. If you turn it off, that's what it looks like. Um, you can also show the chair types and table dimensions for each of your tables. Um, I'm going to unlock everything. Right here are the zoom in and zoom out options. So I can do that to zoom out, zoom in. Um, I can return to uh, the main screen. And I can also move the canvas up and down to the left and the right that way. Finally, I'm gonna go back up to the top here and show you the export options. 
Um, you can generate name badges from your floor plan. So this is gonna download a Microsoft Word file based on the Avery template that you choose and with the output options. You can also export the attendee list, which is gonna include the uh, table assignments for each attendee. You can download an equipment list, which includes all the pieces that you drag and drop onto your floor plan. And you can download a PDF of your floor plan. And this is gonna be a PDF of the current view. So whatever you have marked in current view, that is what's gonna be in your PDF. And this is what my PDF looks like that I just downloaded. And you can see it looks exactly what my current view looks like. So that's how you can use the floor plans tool, but if you have any additional questions, please do let us know.